So hello everybody. All right. So let's get started. Um, I already did a little bit before I hopped on. I want to make a couple disclaimers. Um, first disclaimer is I am not being sponsored by any of the brands I'm going to share with you. Um, these are just what are in my kit, what works for me, um, and any information I can have I want to freely pass along to you. Um, I'm also not a makeup artist. Uh, I'm not a professional makeup artist. I'm not an esthetician. You, you have a makeup artist friend that says, oh, that's the wrong brush that they used. Well, you know what? It probably is because if it's got bristles, I'm going to put it on my face. And if it's the shape that I want, I'm just going to use it. So um, to start out with, sure that your canvas is as clean and as clear as you can get it. It's really important to start with a clean face. Um, so if you don't have a good skincare regimen, start that. Uh, I started mine a little too late. I had good, I was blessed with like super good skin and my skin's still pretty good. But once I turned 30, like all of a sudden these popped up and then these popped up and then you see these bags under my eyes. One of them is named Spencer and the other one is Caden. And I've even got like some of this starting here. So yes, definitely get on a good skincare regimen. Um, and yeah, so once you're uh, clean, you want to make sure you moisturize. It's very important. Moisturize your mug. Um, and then after you know that you've got a nice blank uh, slate to start with, the next thing to do would be to prime. Um, and I, I've already done that. I've already primed my face. I use e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Um, I used to be like a really huge makeup snob. They're expensive for a reason. It's very good quality. Um, I use a lot of makeup. And I simply can't afford to go through a $50 tube of foundation, uh, you know, every single month um, along with everything else. So a lot of the suggestions that I'm going to be making for you tonight are with cheap products. Uh, I wouldn't say cheap. They're affordable products because they're still good quality, for the, especially for the price that you pay. Um, Elf Poreless Putty Primer is awesome. Uh, I love it because if you have any imperfections in your skin, like any wrinkles or scarring or pocking or uh, acne or anything like that, it's going to make a much smoother surface for you to go over. You're, you'll be able to feel it even. I, um, the other thing that I've already started to do is I've already started my gluing. Um, some people don't glue their hair down. Some people do. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, I glue my hair down uh, because I, I glue my eyebrow hair down. You can see I've already started that. I already put the first couple of layers on there. And when my hair is getting fuzzy like this, like it's not like nice and, and short, like it gets really fuzzy on the sides, I also glue my uh, sideburns down. Um, so the reason that I do that is because I don't use my natural eyebrows in drag. My eyebrows are raised. Um, and so you'll see that whenever we start uh, more deep into the process. But I don't have very thick eyebrows. Um, so I only do two or three layers and I also don't need to like comb through my hair or anything like that. What I use, you guys ready for this awesome, uh, drop here, ba bam, Elmer's stick glue. I prefer the purple, but you know, when the white's on sale at Dollar General, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I like the disappearing purple because it's clear when it dries and it's very easy to see like when you can put on the next layer. Um, so yeah, so when I glue my brows down, um, the first thing I do is I take the, I take the glue and I literally just go all in my eyebrows. I want to coat every single hair. If you have thicker eyebrows, you may want to use something like a spoolie, um, or like a little, uh, plastic brush like a little plastic comb to comb your hairs up with I know plenty of queens and kings that do that um, again my eyebrows are thin I don't have to I can kind of just push them up with the glue so I do that um, and then it's really important to wait till it dries completely before applying a new layer um, I'm gonna go on and put my last layer on for you now because the last layer is the layer that I treat a little bit differently so I'm gonna go on and just make it all coated and the beautiful thing about drag is there's truly no right or wrong way it's art and art is completely subjective so if you see me doing something that you don't do that's okay it doesn't mean either of us are wrong it doesn't mean that either of us are doing something better or worse than the other it means that our art is different what so crazy um so i use baby powder so I'm going to go on while the glue is wet. 
I do this. I know I said it's really important to let, make sure it dries completely. That's true for the first couple of layers, but for this last layer, I pack it on in. And the reason that I do that is because I noticed once I started doing it, I actually did that kind of on accident once. I was just in a really big hurry. And I was like, well, got to powder to the eyebrows now. Um, is because of, uh, yeah, it was a total accident. And then once I brushed all the powder off, I felt the texture of my eyebrows. And then I was like, oh, I like this much better. It creates like a much uh, smoother base for you baby powder. So I'm going to go on and feel these. That's still a little tacky there. I'm feeling this side too. That feels good. That feels good. All right, cool. So everything's all glued down. We are ready to almost get started. I've got to grab one more primer. So this is one thing that I have not stopped spending money on, and it's my eye primer. Um, and the only reason I haven't is because... Um, my eyes, I don't know, I just have really watery eyes and I have very hooded eyes and I just haven't found a primer that does quite what I want it to do for me. Um, so the primer that I use is the Urban Decay, uh, right here. And, uh, yeah, so we're gonna go on and spread that out across your eyes. And I go under my eye a little bit too, obviously. And I like to go over my eyebrows as well because not only am I putting creams and powders up there and it needs to stick just as well, but it also kind of helps mask my eyebrows a little bit. I'm gonna have to pull out a different mirror because I think doing this in the phone is not going to work. Oh, cute. I've already got glue coming up. So if that happens, if you start priming your eyes, I don't know if you guys can see. I know it looks all crusty up here. Right here, my glue is already starting to separate. And we don't want that. Even though I'm not going to be necessarily performing tonight, I still want to go through and fix it to show you that you shouldn't be afraid of makeup. Because if you fuck up, guess what? It's makeup. You can just redo it. So I fucked up a little bit. I separated the glue from my skin. So we're just gonna take this little glue stick. I'm gonna go down with it. I'm not gonna go against the grain. I'm gonna go with the grain. All right, that looks good. Powder that little guy. Now it's time to start foundation. Um, oftentimes I use Maron sticks. Um, if you're not familiar with Maron, they are a theater stage makeup uh, company. Um, and like, it's really nice because you literally just like, it's like a push pop. You push it up and you just, and then blend it all with a sponge. Um, I don't have any of that right now. I haven't for a while, but what I do have, oh, excuse me, um, is this Maybelline. 24 hour foundation. Show you guys that. Um, this is amazing because it is like I've used the Fenty foundation before. I can't really tell a big difference between this and Fenty. Maybelline prices with Fenty results. That's what we're going for because it's drag. With this guy. You don't want to take the makeup and put it directly on the beauty blender because these are sponges and it will drink up some of the makeup and you're going to be wasting things. Now that I've got this nice Frankenstein drip happening, we're going to go on and blend. But yeah, so when you're trying to color match, uh, maybe try your neck or try your chest um, and go from there. Well, we'll just... <laughs> so you see up here, I've got these really harsh lines where my glue and stuff is. That's okay. Don't worry about that. We can blend that in. That is part of what the primer is for, and that's why you want a spongy. So what I do, I know I just said never apply makeup directly to the sponge. This is the only time I do it, and I only do little bits of it. I will put, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. I'll put just a drop on the very tip of the sponge and I will cake that into that upper line up there. 
And this same thing goes with any imperfection in your skin, any uneven spot that you might have, even if it's not due to glue, if it's due to scarring, if it's due to acne. Um, that's what your primer's for. Your primer is on your face to help your makeup stick to your face. Don't be afraid to cake more on there. It's drag. See, like I'm really just glopping it on. And that line is much less harsh. Like if you look at this side versus this side, we've got her covered up. The other great thing about uh, my eyebrows is I do cover them up in color, whether it's a natural color for my brows. Um, I know a lot of queens use this area for their cut crease. Um, so that way, if there are any like little imperfections, it's easily covered up with color. There are lots of great little tricks. And just so you guys know, I did prime all the way down. Uh, this foundation honestly does move around a little bit better with a brush, but I feel like beauty blenders are just better, and they're so much um, more forgiving. Um, you see, I'm just like beating my body with it, beating it. <laughs> um, so what you want to do is I actually get the, I'm pretty sure I get the e.l.f. brand ones, like whatever's cheap. Um, I get the ones with three in one. Um, so you got like a really big one, you got Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and your Baby Bear. Um, so yeah, I just get this one. Sometimes it's nice to have a little tiny blendy area in case you like under your eye. Um, so that's really nice. Um, and when you're using beauty blenders, please make sure you are using them wet. It makes me so sad to see somebody pick up a beauty blender to apply stuff to their face and it's just like this little rock that they're rolling around. And like I said, I'm not necessarily about accuracy. I am about functionality. And this is great for me because I'm not always the most accurate. So yeah, make sure they're nice and wet. Move it around. Adjust the wetness however you prefer it. I like them pretty wet, um, but not wet enough that it's like drinking up all my makeup. So yeah, all right, so I've got my base layer down. This is where it starts to get really fun because this is where I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start all my highlighting and all my contouring. So uh, when it comes to creams or powders, why not both? Um, so for contouring, I start with creams. I start with creams and then I finish with powder. And the reason that I do that is because the powder sets the cream. Um, it took a long time for me to understand that I wasn't accentuating my existing features, I am drawing on completely different features. So I treat my face like it is a flat sheet of paper. I know it's a little bit hard because I have some angled lighting in here, but it's just the easiest way for me to do it. I also start, a lot of people start with their contour and then fill in with highlight. I'm weird. I do it the opposite. Um, and the reason that I do that is because, again, that way if I'm not super accurate with my highlight, I can go through and then make the really crisp lines with the contour. Um, so here we go. We're going to start making my face different. Cool. I look like pebbles. That's great. And I start in with my forehead. And you'll notice, yes, that is stark white. Um, I use clown white to highlight with. Um, some people prefer to use, I don't know if you can get in here. Um, this is an e.l.f. cream contour palette. Some people prefer to use a tone that's closer to this, um, which there's nothing wrong with. That's great. That just doesn't work for me. First of all, that's a lot closer to my actual skin tone and it's pretty yellow. Um, so it doesn't like match the color, like the, the tone of my skin. So yeah, so I'm just using clown white. Any brand of clown white will be fine. I prefer to use kind of the, um, uh, more soft clown whites. Like I think there's a Ben Nye that's called light clown. Um, that's what I really like to use when I'm going through and I'm changing my face. What I'm doing is, so we're just going to focus top half right now. What I'm doing is I'm making my forehead more prominent. And you'll notice that there's nothing round about this. Everything I'm going to do is going to be in harsh angles. I'm basically going to be drawing a bunch of squares on my face. I start in the middle of the forehead 
and then I start working on my brow ridges. And um, you'll notice that like this ridge will go straight across and then you can kind of see this in my natural face. You can see how my bone structure, there's a ridge that goes up a little bit. Oftentimes on uh, very masculinely sculptured, <laughs> sculpted faces, um, that will be very prominent and this little dip in will be a lot more prominent as well. It's just there's less fat on uh, men's faces. Um, so we're trying to make me look less round and we're going to add angles everywhere. The other thing that's going to happen with this clown white is it's not going to stay white when it's on your face. It's going to start blending with the makeup underneath of it to create, um, you know, it's going to look a little bit more skin tone. So you see, I paint over my eyebrow, literally just a rectangle across my forehead. And now I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to do... just like that. Blend it in a little bit. The hardest part is getting things to look fucking symmetrical on your face. That's literally the worst goddamn part about drag, about any makeup. But I suppose at the end of the day, no one's face is truly symmetrical, so really it's fine. Another thing I'm really, um, bad at sometimes is putting straight lines on I've I've just now I don't know what it is but something literally just clicked for me recently um trying to draw straight lines on my very curved face uh, again it's just practice 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 and practicing treating your face like it's a flat piece of canvas all right so now that I've got this nice rectangular shape on my forehead I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna blend this out Make sure to mask my eyebrow in there nice and good. I'm gonna go on and cake that white into there on that latter part of my brow because that part is going to be visible even after I add contour and brows. So now that my eyes are at a spot that's decent, I'm gonna go on and start on my cheeks. Um, my cheeks are very naturally Appley, <laughs> like I just I got these two big apples right here. If you can see, I'm gonna look like the Joker for a minute. Uh, um, when I smile, I've got this line right here, and I got a very uh, line right there. It's very feminine. So I'm basically taking this, and I'm just whoop, I'm gonna move it up. Oh my gosh, I am a makeup brush. <gasps> you guys. I'm gonna get a website and I'm gonna sell kabuki brushes with the top of it as my hair and the handle's just gonna be my face, just, just like that. All right, so getting into the cheeks. So what I'll do is this is my uh, natural, this is where my, um, my eye ridge is, like my under, my under ridge. So I kind of use that as a marker for myself. Um, that's just what I have found works for me. You'll find little kind of landmarks on your face that'll work for you as well. And then I just whoop, swoop it right back. We're gonna be fixing a lot of things. It's like a little Nike swoosh. That's exactly what I do. My cheeks are Nike swooshes. I try not to get so caught up with everything has to be a specific way because just because I see something in my head a specific way doesn't mean like the audience doesn't know that so just enjoy the journey of your makeup you might not execute something the exact way that you want to um, it's actually there's a there's a phrase for it when your skill level no longer matches your taste level um, it's called artistically it's called being in the gap and there have been plenty of times where I've been stuck in that gap and I can see something and I can see like, okay, I'm going to try this on my face. And it didn't, you know, necessarily work out, but who cares? I tried something new and half the time I like the shit that comes from that anyway. That's why I say when in doubt, blend it out. 
So now I'm just playing a game to try to get my cheeks to match because like I said, nothing ever fucking matches. Doo -doo -doo. So now what I'm gonna do, since I've got my cheekbones kind of in place, I pick the lowest most spot on my cheekbones, which are gonna be right here. And I'm gonna take some highlight and I'm gonna put a line down each side. You know, that's fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna blend the fuck out of it. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit, right here. See, it's going all the way back just from that little stripe there. Say, oh, Gargoyle Kitty's back. Yeah, so we're gonna do the same thing with this guy. So now that you see this, got that blended out, got that one, well, we'll need a little work. This is my cat Severus. Hi, baby. Oh, hi. All right, so now I'm going to go down uh, to my chin here. Well, you can see my chin. You can kind of see the shape of it. I'm going to whoop, make it wider. Actually, I can show you here. This is my natural chin. Okay? I don't like that. I like it fine, but not for what I'm going for. I want my chin on this face to be wider. So I'm going to do this. Blend down, 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 down. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my lips. For my lips, I do one spot right here. That's all I do for my lower lip. That's it. For my upper lip, I actually, I over accentuate everything on my face. So even this part right here, you know how your lips, you've got like these two parts that come out and you've got that little dip in the middle. So I'm even going to go through, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this here, pull it down, pull it down, and I'm going to restructure my face a little bit around my mouth to give myself a much wider mouth area and like thicker, um, thicker places of, uh, you know, highlighting and then indentation, if that makes sense. So you see, I've got these two parts here. It's much, much wider than my actual lips. And I'm gonna brush out and brush the highlight on top of my lips too, on my lip ridge. So there we go, we got my upper lip. Now I'm gonna bring a little bit of a connection down here. So, yeah. Um, so I'm going under my chin here. I've got this crease in my neck. So what I do is I use that crease as a marker. That is where the bottom of my Adam's apple goes. And then you see I just went boop, 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 up there. Now I'm going to take this white and I'm going to paint two lines down like this. I start right behind my ear and I bring it all the way down. And the reason that I do that, if you ever, if you've ever gone like, you can see the tendons kind of popping out in your neck. So that's all these are. These are just me highlighting those tendons. And I'm also going to bring this down onto my collarbones. So this is actually one thing that I kind of do use my own body for, is I do paint over my natural collarbones. And the reason that I do that is because, honestly, it's easier. If I jut my collarbones out like this, I can put a line right there, that's a good marker. And then I'll put, jut that out, and I'll put a line over on this one. So, bam, we've got even collarbones. 
The only reason we do is because thankfully my God-given collarbones are already even. So we're going to go on and blend this out. If you ever put something on your face too and you look at it and you're like, whoa, that is way too pigmented or that is way too bright or I used way too much of that. Um, who the fuck cares? Blend it out. All right, so now that, that is done, we are gonna do the nose. Um, my nose, as you see, my natural nose is very, it's pretty small, it is small, um, but it's also kind of wide and it's just, you know, it's fine, but I don't know, I just, it doesn't look very masculine to me. So I take some measures to make my nose look longer, narrower, and um, just a completely different shape, you'll see. So what I do is I get some nice highlight and I start with the tip of my nose. And the reason that I do that is because I want the tip of my nose to be the brightest because it is obviously the thing that is whoop, the most uh, like forward. Um, if you're ever not too sure about like how bright should my highlight be, how dark should my contour be, the farther away it is from somebody, the darker it is, the closer it is to somebody, the brighter it is. So I'm going to start with the tip of my nose here. There you go. And now I'm going to make this ridge down my nose. Okay. I know it's not perfect. That's fine. We're going to get in here and we're going to clean all of this up. This is just like my starting point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and try to clean this up a little bit. And I'm also going to go on and add some wings to my nose. They're not really wings. I kind of put this little notch in the tippy top here. I don't know if you can see that. It's not even yet, so bear with me. I am gonna smooth this out. But the reason that I do this is to make it look like the bridge of my nose is very wide, and then this part kind of sticks out a little bit from it, if that makes sense. All right, so now that I've got the tip of my nose, uh, the bridge of my nose, or the ridge of my nose, I guess, and the bridge of my nose, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm gonna go through and um, make my nostrils. And this, I feel, is the part that makes my face look, or my nose at least, look really, really different. Because you see that my nostrils are very short and squat. These nostrils will be much, much higher. You guys can kind of see where that's going. So now... Cover that guy in. All right, so there I have a completely new nose. All right, so if you can believe it, I am done with highlight. Well, with cream highlight anyway. So for um, contour, again, we're going back to e.l.f. Like, really, we have Dr e.l.f. and NYX to thank uh, for drag. Um, so yeah, I'm going back to e.l.f. Um, when you open these palettes, like I said, we kind of looked at this earlier, there's the highlight here, and then there's these three contours. I usually stick with the bottom two. You can see I sometimes fuck with this one up here. But these are the main two that I use. This one is a little bit lighter than this one, so I'm going to be using a combination and this one to use on everything from my chin up. Once we get down past my chin is when I start using this darker one. And again, this all depends completely on your own skin tone, your own comfortability level, your style. I'm going to start here with these ridges.
Another thing to think about if you have very short hair um, or if you shave your head or, you know, whatever, you're going to want to, um, when my hair is at its shortest, my makeup actually stops right here. Um, because all of this is really, really short, you want to continue that into your hairline. Um, especially if you're not wearing a wig that's going to be covering up all of this, because then it's just like this amazing face and then the illusion just stops. So you're going to want to keep that shit going. So yeah, I just use this little brush in here. Do the same thing to the other side. Sorry that I'm blocking your view. I look head on, make sure I'm even. All right. Looks like I brought this guy a little bit, oh, a lot lower than I brought that guy. Okay, so we're gonna bring this guy down to match. There we go. We are building a base. What I am doing is literally just the under part of my face. My powders are what's going to make it pop. So you'll notice that this is much darker. This contour is much darker than this contour. Again, it's because it's farther away from you when you're looking at me head on, and this is much closer. Also, I, um, I just don't like the super de duper de contrasted forehead contour on the inside. That's just a personal taste uh, for me. I mean, I like it j great when other kings do it. I'm just not a fan of it on my face. So we are gonna keep bringing this out. And then I'm going to actually bring it down towards the middle. So you see, basically all I've done is I've outlined this rectangle here. I'm going to take this and blend this out. And then we'll blend this out a little bit. And then there. Oop. Now I'm going to go into my eyes. I'm going to create my crease. My natural crease is very low. I have very hooded eyes, as you can see. So anything that I put in my actual crease is not going to be visible. So I raise it. All right, I've made my little starting points on the inside there. And now we're just going to... I'm gonna go up into the natural eyebrow a little bit and then down. Same thing over here, we're gonna go up and into the natural eyebrow a little bit. And then down. So you can see I start the ridge on the inside of my nose, or my crease, I'm sorry, on the inside of my nose, and then I end just to the outside of my eye. All right, I'm gonna start blending this down just a little bit, that way they look less like these stripes and more like, you know, actual eye ridges. I don't wanna blend down too much though, because I still want that cut crease right there. But just, blah. Now I'm going to connect these with a uh, divot across the top of my nose bridge. So I've got that and we want to make sure that this divot across my nose, bri nose bridge also connects to these lines that are coming down um, that are outlining my brow ridges. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. Now I'm going to go in and do my cheeks. Okay, yeah, I really wasn't that bad. I got these nice dark lines that I started with, and that's because I'm gonna use most of the makeup that I glooped on my face to blend in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this one come up a little bit more because the other one comes up a little bit more. There you go, now they're both kind of curved. All right, and then what I do is I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna ever so slightly blend this out this way because that kind of gives me my cheek apples again, if that makes sense. Like, you see my natural ones down here. I like those about my face and I kind of want to keep them in drag. So I'm gonna create that illusion by whoop, just kind of blending that inward. First, we're gonna get rid of some of this excess stuff on our brush. All right, good to go. Now we're gonna take this guy and we're just gonna start blending, blending, blending. So I kind of bring this down to where this part is a curved line and then this part becomes a straight line, if that makes sense. I try to blend this all the way down into like where my, you know, uh, if I had these nice high cheekbones that I'm creating for myself, I'm gonna create like a gradient, like a shadow fall off, if that makes sense. Like obviously the shadow's gonna be the darkest near the edges of it, and then we're just gonna taper it down, fall it off. Oh, be mindful if you have glued your sideburns down, cause I just forgot that I did that and I started trying to pull them up. Well, it's looking pretty good there, eh? And you'll notice I'm painting over my sideburns right now. Um, that's because if my sideburns weren't there, it would just be face. So since I am creating new face on top of my sideburns, um, yes, I am coloring right over them. I may have to put like some foundation down over these puppies maybe a little bit. I don't know. We'll burn that bridge when we get there. Close enough. Now what I'm going to do is, um, you see these lines that we made with our white earlier? Now they're going to make a whole lot more sense to you. Because I'm going to bring a line whoop, right down here. Sorry, if you guys are wondering what I'm doing right now by putting all these spots on my face, um, I just dipped my brush into this cream contour and I got way too much on it. And I was like, well, this is not what I want. So I just kind of started putting little deposits of makeup where I'm going to need it because I did not need my brush that saturated for what I'm about to do. Um, okay, so we're going to focus on these lines. So we're bringing that line down. And that line down. So now what we're going to do with these uh, lines that we created on our face is I'm going to start going in here and blending this area together. That way this looks more like a and not like a I don't know if that really makes any fucking sense to you guys, but um perfect sense to me. So I'm bringing this right here. I'm kind of curving that into there so that it looks like it's all one connected fucking thing 
instead of just random lines that I'm drawing on my face. All right, so I've got my cheeks at a place that I'm okay with. Um, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna kind of blend this area a little more, but in order to do that, I kind of have to contour my lips and my nose first. So we're gonna blend all this area in once I'm done with this and with this. So now I'm making the little divot in my nose. And since my drag nose looks bigger than my actual real nose, I then make this look bigger as well because a wider nose garners just wider features all around. So now I'm going to start connecting this line to this line. Okay. I'm going to color in with the contour a little bit like in this area. Do the same thing over here. We're going to blend these two lines together. That way it creates like a little cohesiveness like this guy did over here. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Blend these two lines together. We really make the cutest faces when we put on makeup, don't we? Like, the, uh. so I've gone through here and I put these lines under uh, where that the bridge of my nose starts. So you can see, I'm actually kind of starting to take shape here and looking less like a blob uh, and more like a clown. <laughs> so now I'm going to contour over my nostrils and then I'm going to blend all of this and this and this on both sides. See, I kind of look like a birdie right now, like there's wings over my nose, um, or maybe like a spider just like tried to attack my face. But we're gonna blend the shit out of all of this. Take all of this and just blend it. Blend, blend, blend. So now I'm gonna come inside my chin here. I'm going to bring a line here, a line here, and then we're going to do this line across. Um, I'm going to start getting into this darker uh, brown now because we're done with this. We're going to start doing this. So we're getting the darker. We're starting under here. I'm going to start making lots of silly faces um, and really unflattering ones because down on my chin right here, ooh, <clears throat> excuse me, down on my chin right here, you'll see like my natural chin line. I don't know if you guys can see it. I've kind of got like, like it's just really round and I've got these little granny pockets right here, these little, little handbags, little fanny packs. So yeah, here we go. This is how I paint my chin. Um, the reason that I do this like this is because um, I just want to really, really square off my jaw. I actually end up shortening my jaw by a little bit. You'll see. I, I shorten it by a good half inch or so. Um, but I'm going to draw that line literally straight back. don't love that. 
because that kind of hits into my neck a little bit. So we're going to adjust that a touch. That's better. All right, we're gonna get the other side going here. And again, this is the tricky part, making it even. Yeah, just like I told you guys at the beginning of all this, I am essentially drawing squares all over my face. Now I'm going to come on the inside of this line that I drew for my tendon, come inside this line that I drew for my tendon, and then, hold on, alright, got it, got it, now we're going to draw a chin. Sorry. So once again, just like everything else that I draw with my face, my chin is not my actual chin. Oh, well, it's a little uneven too. Um, I contour, I don't know if you can tell, but like my chin actually stops back here. So I start that contour line a little early just so that way I'm not getting um I don't know like a whole lot of double chin action. Okay now we just blend the fuck out of all of this. If you ever notice like especially when you're coming in with contours um, if you're not really familiar with a brush or, um, you know, moving the contour around with the brush or you find that you're getting some pilling or anything like that, that's okay. We're going over all of this again with powder. So if you can see a little brush, brush stroke here or there, don't panic. I feel like creams are a lot more temperamental than powders. You're gonna see like more of your mistakes in them. And I honestly think that that's what scares people away from them so much is because like it's not it's not very forgiving. But you don't just end with creams. Like you have to set it with powder. So, there we go. That is A neck. That's something. Wow. It looks so much more squat than usual. I don't know. That's weird. Probably because I'm all scrunched up in this bed. Then we're going to take this um, brown and we're going to go on the outside of that white tendon line that we drew earlier. All right, this on top of the collarbone is the hardest part for me because I just, I can't, there's no way to hold this brush in this hand. This one usually goes a little bit better, but like doing like right on right for some reason is so hard. Uh, so I just said that this one was usually better. It's all right, it's makeup, we'll fix it. You know, I think I'm about as good as I'm going to get right now. Um, I'm going to go on and start setting my face while I'm talking about all of this. Um, and again, we're just going to use baby powder. Um, but yeah, I was going to do one about getting into body as a king. Um, I know that that looks different for everybody. Um, I was going to talk about binders and taping and 
um, safe practices, uh, but also padding. I know that padding sounds more like a queen thing. They got to get their hips big. Um, but the thing about kings is our hips are already big and we can't shave them down, but we can pad other things to make ourselves look bigger. This isn't actually something that I have done in performing yet. This is just like a concept that I have, but I am going to create pads for my calves and for my shoulders. I like wearing really tight pants in drag. I just do. I honestly feel the most masculine when I have leggings on. I don't know why that is, but it just is, and I love it. Um, we're going to, uh, just real quick before I keep going on this topic, um, I just want to let you know, I am baking my face and my chest right now. Listen, thick thighs save lives. Um, so now I get to sit here for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and chat with you guys because I am baking. Um, and there are lots of different schools of thought about baking. Some people think that it is stupid. Some people think it's a waste of time. Some people swear by it. If you're not sure what baking is, it is um, the uh, process of setting your face using powder and your own heat. I cannot speak to uh, the actual science behind it because I truly don't know. Somebody literally just told me, you should try baking your face. And I was like, okay. Um, so I tried it and I'm a very, very sweaty individual. Like very sweaty. I never used to be a super sweaty individual and still I started taking SSRIs. Um, and for whatever reason, they make me sweat like fucking crazy. Um, I was still finding uh, like I said, like I would still get like track, like track marks of sweat. Um, and it would like, it would, it would barrel down all the way to my, uh, to like my face. And then once I started, um, taking the time to bake, like we are now, that stopped. So I don't know if the science behind it is real, but I do know that if I take 15 minutes out of my getting ready routine and just sit here with baby powder caked on my face, it makes my face a lot better. <gasps> Please help me. Time to dust ourselves off. I really want one of those um fan highlighter brushes. I feel like those work so much better to dust off um powder. Okay. All right, trying to get all that extra powder off. And then when you look at, oh, a little more in there. I'm gonna pull the camera a little bit closer. That way you can see. I don't know if you'll be able to see with the phone quality, but if you take a look, there's a lot less imperfections. It just looks a little more blended. And it feels really nice and it makes you smell like a baby butt, you guys. Okay, so now we are gonna get the powders. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking, depending on where my face is or where, where I'm contouring on my, or where I'm highlighting on my face. Oh my God, why are you guys taking any of my advice? I don't know anything. Um, so I'm taking, a, a, depending on where it is on my face, either this one or this one to highlight with. Again, that has a lot to do with the tone of my skin and personal preference because I do like to be a little bit more dramatic. What, me? Okay, this that I'm using for my uh, powder contour, it's this NYX palette. It's a super common palette. I'm pretty sure it was like 15 bucks, if that. Um, 
And like I said, for my highlights, I usually stick to these two. And for my contours, I usually stick to, I really, really, really like this one. So I will literally use this until there is none of it left. Um, I also use this one for like the darker parts of my face, but I really, really enjoy this one. And the reason that I enjoy this one so much is because it's a bit of a warmer brown. Um, what? Warmer brown? Stevie, you said your face had cool tones to it. Well, you see, Stevie, it does. Um, but I found that when you use cooler browns on your face, at least to me, it looks more like dirt. Um, and so when I use a warmer brown, it looks, I don't know, I feel like it's a lot more pleasing. So the two in the middle don't really get much love, especially that one, because that one straight up looks like I got stuck in the chimney on my way to give you presents. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to zip through this next part. I've been yakking way too much. I guess that's part of it, huh? I kind of got to tell you what I'm doing. My problem, though, is I cannot multitask. I get so caught up in one thing or another. It's super fucking hard for me to keep shit straight. So, mm, the powder goes much quicker than the cream. And that's not because it's easier or because uh, I'm being lazy or I'm trying to like rush through this. I am trying to rush through this, but um, it always goes quicker because you've already done all the hard work with your creams. You've already laid out your basic shapes. Honestly, um, I feel like the most difficult part is finding all, all your shapes, is finding a new face to put on top of the face you're already living with. So once that part's done, it's super easy. We're just kind of following through what we did. And you might think that if I'm only using um, beiges and things like that to go over this, why even use it at all? Um, that is a very good question. I use it because I feel like it gives me a little bit more of a finished look and it, it sets the makeup more. Yes, I know that I just baked my face. Um, but I feel like it just you know, it sets the, it sets the cream more and you're smoothing things out a little bit more. You're covering up those imperfections that you had in your cream. Oh my gosh, I have pizza on my face. <laughs> it's in my mustache hairs. Hold on. Because you know I haven't waxed. Look at it. It's stuck right in there. I just now realized that I forgot to do my chin dimple with my creams. So I guess we're going to do that with powder. Oh well. Close enough. It's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get bah -bah, this guy out. This is what I do, uh, like the bigger pieces. And sometimes I'll take it through and kind of blend that out a little bit more. Again, this is just the fucking hardest. Okay, now we are going to do facial hair. Dun, dun, dun. And just uh, all the little details, I'd say. Um, 
So um, I'm going to do a couple of different uh, facial hair techniques for you guys tonight. I'm going to do um, all in one. I'm going to do uh, some gradient uh, or ombre, if that's what you want to call it. Um, I'm going to do uh, hair strokes and I'm going to do stubble. I'm going to take care of all of it. That way you guys can see how I do each and every one of it. I don't normally combine it all like this, but you know, this is the best way that I know to uh, help. I'm going to get my little angled brushes here. Um, most of my brushes I bought from Target and most of them are e.l.f. brand. Are you seeing a common theme here? So I am going to the fuck did I just drop? Oh my god, there was a piece of pepperoni that just fell off of me. <gasps> That's so weird. So this side right here, I'm going to be using that brown. And I'm going to be using this, which I don't know if you can tell, but it is black. I know there's like little spots of white in it, but what are you going to do? So I'm going to be using those two colors right there to blend together. I think I'm going to start black and end brown. Okay. So a lot of times what I like to do is put um, guidelines on, if that makes sense. So that is where my inside corners are, obviously. I'm still going to use this black to mark where my eyebrow is going to end. So you see, I actually like to start my eyebrow in my eye crease. So this little guy, this is brown, since I'm going to blend it out into brown. Oh good, I made a boo-boo. We will blend that shit right out, though. All right, let's get this guy a little thinner here. Okay, so we've got that line, too. Do it on the other side. All right, so we've got kind of a basic outline for my eyebrows. So I'm gonna switch back to black. So when you're doing like um, dual tones and you're trying to blend them together or make them look gradient or ombre, however you wanna say it, um, I find personally that it's made a little bit easier if you're using the same medium for both colors. So like if they're both liquid or if they're both, or cream, I guess I should say, or if they're both powder, um, I find that that makes my life a little bit easier. All right. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to lay it on really, really thick and heavy in here. And when you're working on eyebrows that you have glued down, be careful uh, to not undo all your hard work. So if you look, if you were here in the beginning or you remember in the beginning, I go up with my glue. Um, if you can see my actual eyebrow hairs there underneath of my, uh, all my contour there, you can see they're all facing up and that is because the glue, I, you know, pushed it up. So we're going to want to keep a super similar motion when we are going in with this 
or else we could fuck our brows up. Never heard of her. All right, so now I look really, really weird. Um, now I'm gonna start going in with the brown. <laughs> now I look weird. Bish, I've been looking weird. Um, now I'm gonna start with the brown and I'm gonna leave a gap in the middle because I do my blending last. Actually, that's not, that's not terrible. I don't hate that. Okay, now I'm going to get in here. And then I remember after Guiding Light, I think it was As the World Turns. Can somebody please tell me why Victor Newman was on both of those shows? I don't know, I don't watch Drag Race. I'm allergic to transphobia. All right, so we've got kind of a, these are kind of eyebrows. Um, I don't know if you can see the ombre. Okay, so I am going to do um, a bit of a goatee, I think. Um, you are not. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do ombre down at the bottom uh, just to kind of match what we have going on up here and then um, I'll do some stubble for you and then I'll probably do some beard strokes in there and then I'll go back through and I'll do uh, hair strokes in my eyebrows um, just so you can kind of see a little bit of all of those uh, methods. There are lots of different methods of doing facial hair by the way this is not your only option. This is just my favorite option. I prefer painting it on because I feel like I have more control over it. Um, another really great resource are, uh, you can buy mustaches already made with lace front on them. Um, and you can use spirit gum to stick those to your face. There are also like uh, the old school kings. Um, or like the, the more traditional kings or the male illusionists they will actually glue hair to their face with spirit gum. Some people will actually take their own hair, that way it matches, and they'll cut off the little baby ends of their hair um, or keep, uh, like, the st like when they get shaved on their heads, like they'll keep those clippings and they keep those in a bag and um, will literally glue that onto their face. And I've never done that um, because I've always been afraid to. And it looks really itchy to me. And I feel like glue is a lot less forgiving than makeup is. Um, so yeah, I would just rather, I, I'm, I'm more comfortable with this medium. So that's what I do. Also, once again, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't consider myself a male illusionist. Um, I think that my style is a touch more androgynous. Um, which is funny because when I started drag, I didn't want it to, to be that way at all. I wanted to be like super mask. And very like... I remember I got... Uh, 
a denim jacket. <laughs> it was like the first um, staple piece that I had. And a queen was like, oh, I love this jacket. You should stone it. And I remember thinking to myself, like, bitch, I ain't stoning this. Would you ever walk down the street in rhinestones? Uh, and now I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, you totally fucking would, first of all. And second of all, um, it's ma mask for mascara. Oh, that's me. <laughs> second of all, it's a stage. And I paint for the back row. All right. Getting that as even as can be. Right. All right. Now I'm doing the black. I did brown for the outside. I'm going to do black for the inside. Clean your brushes. All right, now we're just gonna kind of fill that in. Fill in. And now we're gonna take this and we're gonna blend the shit out of it so that way we don't look like a fucking skunk. I'm just Bob Rossing it up. I can't help it. Oh, shucks. My legs, I gotta stretch these little turkeys. So now I'm gonna get down to the details of my facial hair, including my eyebrows. So as you can see, I'm gray for my brows and for my beard. Oh, that reaches back way farther than that does. Gotta fix that. Um, so now I'm gonna go on top of what I have painted and add some details. I just stuck my thumb in makeup. Do you guys hear my cat? All right, so I went on through and I did some hair strokes in here. Now, I um, use liquid eyeliner, li liquid eyeliner um, instead of uh, like um, a brush. And the only reason I do that, truthfully, is because I don't have a brush small enough. Like, if I had a little pinpoint brush like that, you know what I mean? I would probably use that more, but I don't. So I use a liquid eyeliner, and it's fine. You know what? Like I said, guys, they're not twins. They're not even brothers. They're... I've never met before. Um, so I'm actually going to do my eyeballs real quick. Just the top uh, of my liner. My favorite kind of liquid liner for facial hair though, Johnny, honestly, is Wet n Wild. Um, and the reason that I like them so much for facial hair is because I feel like... Um, Sorry, apparently I can't talk and do eyeliner at the same time either. Um, the reason that I really like them is because it feels like the, it, it, the, like it builds up on you and it becomes a solid after you put it on. So like if I use it for, specifically for stubble is what I really like using it for. Because then if I get really sweaty, like one little piece of like one literally little dot of stubble might fall off but at least it's not like running like it doesn't run it just like solidifies and stays there if that makes sense so yeah I'm just doing my liquid liner now I do a really um basic wing I mean you can see it real basic like I just start at the inside of my corner and then go higher as I go out and then I go in there and fill it in And that's it. And then I kind of have to talk looking down or with my eyebrows raised because, once again, I have hooded lashes or hooded lids. So if I, like, look up, um, 
then I'm going to get a nice black line in that negative space that I've made for my cut crease and then I will be so mad. All right, so now I'm going to create little lines in my beard. Um, and instead of making them, you can see up here, like I've done some real cartoony lines for my, uh, eyebrows. I'm going to do these a little more, um, realistic, as realistic as I get, at least. Instead of doing like these long flowy things, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do concentrated, uh, small strokes. So just so you guys can see the difference in what that looks like. You just literally go in there real quick and go dot, 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 and just brush, little tiny brushes. Sometimes I like to go and, um, like I'll actually squeeze the tip of this so that way it's nice and clear. So this is really nice to do with black over brown, I think. I know I did like the little gradient here, but I, like I said, I was just trying to show you guys little different techniques that I do. So I'm kind of combining them all at once just so you can see them all. So yeah, just get those little tiny strokes into there. Like I said, this is as realistic as I get because once again, I paint for the back row. Um, so you can see, got little hair strokes in there. Let's try all the beard things. Except being a beard. Never do that. Just kidding. <laughs> You've met my husband. I am going to make just stubble dots. And this is probably my go-to just because it's very quick and it's very easy. So the first thing that I do is I kind of outline where I want my mustache to be because again, I'm not doing it with like the actual pull of my face because if I did that, if you can see here, my natural lip line ends like right here so I'd be missing like half of my lip. And the cool thing about this too, with it being fast and it being easy, is you can't mess it up. They're just dots and it's just stubble. And like, if you make them different sizes, that's okay. If you pa accidentally paint over none, one, that's okay. Like, it's stubble. All right, so I've got that outlined. Still got pizza in my mustache hairs. That's a little crooked. There, I think that's better. All right. So now we're just literally gonna go in and fill in. See, I've already smudged like three of them, but it doesn't matter because it's stubble. I have crusty pizza lips too, y'all. Um, so now I'm going underneath of my eye. I take, uh, again, clown white and just kind of do the inside corners. I don't do much. I certainly don't do as much as, um, my drag mom, uh, Sassy does, um, because her eyes are, are very, very, you know, they're so big and cartoony and, um, they look great on her. It's just not what I'm going for uh, with my face. Like, yes, I like a cartoony face, but I like to mix a little bit of realism in with it, too. 
and I don't have like huge lashes or like lots of colors usually that I'm able to uh, play with around my eyes so I like to keep things like yes I do want to accentuate different things but I like to keep those accentuations small so I do this on the inside corner of each eye just to uh, put a little, little pop of highlight there and now I'm going to go and make a black line right under both of those all right I'm gonna take this black I'm gonna line underneath here it's not cute Sorry, I'm covering up my face again. Alright. Well, it ain't perfect, but there she is. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. Now I'm going to take some residual powder on this little guy. I'm just going to very gently... on those little guys. If you do not powder creams, they will run. There's really not much left to do. I think just lips and lashes and that's it. So for my lippies, I found this bomb ass dual lipstick that is literally perfect for me. It might even cut through all this pizza crust. Um, okay, anyway, this awesome lipstick. Um, this is an e.l.f., obviously, dual. It is just whatever neutrals they had. They've got daytime and nighttime. Guess which one we're going to use? Both. So I use the daytime for the inside of my lips, and then I'll use the darker one for the corners of my mouth. Oh. Oh! Ah! It almost came off in my mouth. <gasps> All right, so we got that. And now we're gonna do the corners here. my lips that's literally all I do I really want lip liner I don't have that currently if you have it I suggest using it um, all right lashes where the fuck is my mascara mm -mm -mm -mm. oh found it so I use um, uh, Lash Paradise by L'Oreal. It's um, a really good knockoff of the Too Faced, um, which I used to be obsessed with. Um, so what I do is I do, I don't even really do more than one coat. I only do one coat on top because I'm gonna glue some more lashes on in a minute. So I just do one coat on the top there same over here I've also got to clean that little guy up we made a boo-boo but that's okay because we can just blend it out and for my bottom lashes I'm only going to do the lashes from here over I'm not going to do my inside corners because that is where my white is and it does not look good when you put black mascara over a white under eye. So, lashes, when it comes to kinging. Uh, like I said, there are so many different people who do things so many different ways. None of them are wrong. All art is valid, all drag is valid. Um, some kings are not about lashes, that's okay. Some queens don't even wear lashes. But I 
personally enjoy wearing lashes and I will explain why once I can reach them. Ugh. So kind of with this little white under eye thing that I do, the rest of my face is so big um, and like overdone. I just feel like I look very naked without anything on my, like it looks like I have absolutely no lashes. So I don't get very big ones. Where's my glue? <laughs> Alright, so the lashes that I use are just these little guys. Right ya. They are, they don't even have a number. They're literally just like the cheap little drugstore uh, lashes. They are Ask Queens what they use for their bottom lashes. That's usually what these are. Um, and to glue them on, I use the only thing you should ever use, which is eyelash glue. Please, for the love of all that is holy, do not put weave bond on your eyeballs. You could really hurt yourselves. I think I had a little blockage in it because it wasn't coming out. Oh, what the hell? It's still not coming out. Watch, I'm gonna squeeze it and then it's just, oh, fuck, that's exactly what happened. It's out now. So we are gonna be creative here and we're just gonna go, Because we have spilled lash glue. There was literally just like a little blockage in there and I squeezed too hard. Yeah. Once again, I use regular lash glue, just duo. You can get that literally anywhere. But yeah, I just literally get like the duo. I know it's white. It dries clear. If you still don't like that, they do make black duo as well. What I am doing now is I'm blowing on them because they stick better once it's dried a little bit. It needs to be just a little tacky. If you're scared of putting lashes on, don't be. You can't poke, like, you're not going to poke yourself in the eye. Your eye is closed. And if you glue it and it's not on there right, guess what? You can just re-glue it. Peel it off and try again. What I find is most helpful is matching my corners. I can't do this on the phone. Well, maybe I can. Y'all are about to get real up close and personal. So I like matching my corners, inside corner and then outside, and then just kind of giving it a little stretch to make sure that it's meeting like in the in-between two. And there we go. Again, we're gonna match to our inside corner, outside corner, and just give it a little, oop, try not to take it off there. And there we go. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. It's only three hours later. It doesn't take that long. I almost forgot. <laughs> It's not a Stevie Phoenix face, unless he forgets something. And I forgot my nostrils. Cause with this nice long nose that I've made myself, look at these little tiny nostrils that, oh, poor babies. So we're gonna make these nostrils a little bigger. That's not very even. I'm sure you guys look love looking up my nose and into my boogers. So I am going to fix my nose holes all by myself. Thank you guys so much. Um, it has been a joy uh, doing this. I've really, really missed this. Even if this tutorial didn't help anybody of you, like any one of you, I want you guys to know that it helped me. Um, I.